Hello, my name is Bojan Petrov and welcome to the V-Ray 6 for SketchUp webinar. In this webinar, I want to demonstrate how we at Chaos approach the design and production process for the V-Ray 6 release video. Based on our experience during the project, we developed a new workflow, incorporating every V-Ray tool at our disposal. Not only did we achieve our goals that we set up for ourselves, but we also managed to achieve them faster than expected. The inspiration for the video is a real-world project in Palm Springs, where mountains, desert and palm trees meet and blend into this beautiful landscape. Our main goal in this project was to recreate the unique setting and tell a compelling visual story showcasing the powerful tools added in the new V-Ray updates. So before we start with the demonstration, I would like to give you a quick overview of the webinar. We'll start off by exploring the Enscape and V-Ray bridge. This new capability allows you to have a much more efficient early design stage. Then you will see how you can easily convert Enscape materials and 3D models to V-Ray ones allowing you to reach the next step in creating photorealistic imagery. After doing that, we'll start polishing our image for a production render with the help of the new cloud generator, Enmesh, V-Ray Dirt and Distance Texture. And we'll finish the webinar with some useful tips on how you can speed up your pre-production workflow with the help of the Finite Dome. So, without further ado, let's dive in. As I mentioned in the introduction, this project is based in Palm Springs, California and represents a prefabricated energy neutral home that will be built there. The model was developed and shared with us by our friends at Archelam Creative Agency. This was wonderful because that meant we had a strong starting point from where we can continue building and improving our project. Something that's new in V-Ray 6 is the capability to read Enscape materials, lights and compatible 3D models. This powerful new function significantly improves the collaboration between design teams working on early and later stages of a visualization project. Enscape's renowned real-time engine is the perfect tool for design development, as it gives you instant high-quality feedback that is much needed for rapid experimentation. Previously, when it came down to switching from Enscape to V-Ray, you had to replace every single material and object with a V-Ray one, which is a very time-consuming job. But this no longer is the case, thanks to the new bridge between V-Ray and Enscape. All Enscape materials, lights and compatible assets can be read from V-Ray and you will automatically get a representation of your scene in the V-Ray frame buffer. Naturally, knowing that we can slash our scene setup time significantly, we opened our project with Enscape and started exploring it in real time immediately. We used Enscape as an early design tool, allowing us to iterate faster to the different scenarios. So what we did first was to use the scatter tool and spread different types of vegetation in our exterior. We weren't exactly sure what type of materials we wanted for our house, but thanks to the real-time feedback, we could go through some drastic changes until we find the right combination. When we felt comfortable with the exterior environment, we wanted to continue refining the visualization by adding more complex materials and geometry from the V-Ray 3D content library, Chaos Cosmos. By doing that, we can take advantage of V-Ray's photorealistic capabilities. Note that we use this workflow for this project, but it's not required to have a set Enscape scene in order to render with V-Ray. To demonstrate the compatibility, we'll start an interactive render and Enscape at the same time. Let's start an interactive render mode from here. You can see that V-Ray will render the Enscape assets, materials and lights. Right now, everything in our scene has a proper material, except for the terrain. So let's open the Enscape material editor and add one from there. 
We'll select the white material and replace it with the sand material from the Enscape library. You can see that both Enscape and the V-Ray frame buffer updated the new material. But in order to get even more realistic materials, we'll change the Enscape materials with V-Ray ones. We can do that with just the click of a button. Keep in mind that once you promote an Enscape material to a V-Ray material, you will lose the link with Enscape. That means that V-Ray materials are not yet supported by Enscape. Now we can add additional detail and corrections to our textures. You can probably notice that we have removed the material library from the asset editor, transferring all the materials inside of the Chaos Cosmos. We did that for a better user experience. This way all of the materials can be in one place, allowing you to easily search for the perfect material. In the Chaos Cosmos library, you can find hundreds of high quality materials, from bricks to concrete, fabrics and many more. Right now, we are interested in the ground material. To import the material you have downloaded, simply click here and it will be added to your material tab inside of the asset editor. There you can use the tag option to properly organize your materials based on specific categories. For example, I have downloaded concrete and wood materials and I will add a tag house because I will use them to shade my house. Another thing I would like to do is to replace the Enscape palm trees with more detailed ones from the Chaos Cosmos. So let's pick a tree and import it. To replace the Enscape models, let's first select them. In the Components menu, we'll search for the Chaos Cosmos palm tree. When you right-click the component, there will be an option to replace selected. Then just give it some time and each one of the Enscape trees will be replaced. After establishing the exterior scene, we notice that the big portion of the image is just a blue sky. That's why we decided to add some clouds to cover all that empty space. One way to easily add clouds is with a dome light and an HDRI. But then we're going to limit ourselves with the clouds from the HDRI. If only we could create custom clouds designed specifically for our scene. Well, we actually can thanks to the new cloud generator inside of the V-Ray Sun. All you need to do is enable them from here and you can start customizing your own clouds. By increasing the density parameter, you can increase the amounts of clouds in your scene. The variety parameter creates clumped up or patchy clouds. In this case, we increase the value so our clouds got spread out. The cirrus amount is responsible for the rows of faded out clouds. By increasing the thickness of our clouds, they will start looking very heavy, just like when it's about to start raining. And the height corresponds to the altitude of the house. If you want to change the position of your clouds, you can use the offset X and Y parameters. When you feel satisfied with your cloud variation, you may want to simulate a cloud animation, which you can do so by enabling the dynamic clouds. There we have options like wind direction and wind speed, which you can tweak so you get the right animation for your scene. Note that the clouds you generate will interact with the volumetric lighting, which is used to create god rays. And just like that, we easily created the right atmosphere for our shot. But you probably noticed that all of a sudden our scene became very dark. That's because when we increase the altitude, the sun got blocked by the clouds. To make our scene properly exposed, let's turn the auto exposure value parameter. In V-Ray 6, we now have a light cache in the interactive production render, which means that now you can get an auto exposure while rendering interactively. All you need to do is check this button here. But the most important benefit of having light cache in the interactive production render is that now your production renders will look identical to the interactive ones. At these stages, we started implementing the final touches to our shot. We noticed that our ground looked very dull. Usually, in rocky environments, there is a lot of uneven terrain. To achieve a more natural look, let's first add a displacement texture, generally used to add displaced surfaces. You will notice that we need to add a texture that will define the exact way our surface is going to be displaced. In our case, we want to create an indent around the stones and vegetation. And here, the new distance texture shines. The distance texture takes the selected objects, in our case the stones and the vegetation, and pushes the terrain further away from them. 
As you can see, we started getting uneven terrain around the objects, exactly what we wanted. But right now, it seems that the indentations are too thin and the effect of the displacement is not very visible. You can control the radius of the affected area from here. Right now, the terrain around the objects looks very sharp. To get a smoother definition of the displaced terrain, we can use a Bezier curve that will soften the edges of the displacement texture. I will adjust the Bezier curve like this. Making a rounder curve causes the edges of our displacement to be smoother. I think this looks much better. Following the same steps, I managed to spread out this grass geometry. The distance texture is a powerful tool that has unlimited cases, from terrain manipulation to road making. Next, we wanted to add some additional detail to our exterior by creating a gabion. An important part of the gabion is the net, and in order to find the right one, we need a variety of different patterns to choose from. The quickest way we can easily achieve this is by using the enmesh. The most typical use case for enmesh is the creation of patterns that intertwine, like cloths, or in this case, nets. Let me demonstrate how we can easily create a net that will contain these rocks. To apply the end mesh, you have to select the object you want the pattern to be spread and click here. You can find the end mesh in the V-Ray Geometry tab. The next step is to add a pattern to your end mesh. I have previously created these patterns here. Just by selecting one and adding it here, you can immediately see that the pattern got tiled. Sadly, the tiling of the pattern is not dense enough, so let's increase it from here. If you would like the pattern to be thicker or thinner, you can use the height percentage to properly adjust it. To change the pattern of the net to something different, you can simply delete the current one and add a new one. Note that the pattern you're assigning should be tileable. Otherwise, you need to use the spacing parameters to properly crop the pattern. Now, I would like to give you another tip to push the realism of your materials to the next level. Imperfections are what makes real life real. Sometimes it could be just a dot on the wall or a scratch on the table, but they all tell a story and that is what we're drawn to, detail. To add those little imperfections, we can use the V-Ray dirt texture. This utility allows you to add dirt around crevices of an object. I have added a dirt texture to this bench material. My goal is to simulate a weathering effect. As the bench has been exposed to the elements, it's only natural to see streaks of dirt. With just a slider, you can control how much of the area you want to affect. With the radius slider, we can control how far we want the dirt texture to be applied. And with the falloff effect, we can control the speed of the transition between occluded and non-occluded areas. Thanks to the new updates, we can now be even more flexible and choose which object to affect the dirt. If you have two objects that are in close proximity to each other, the dirt texture will detect it and add additional detail like here. This can be helpful if both objects were stationary, but in this case we don't want the towel to create a weathering effect. To change that, all we need to do is select the towel and add it to the affected by selection. Now this looks much better. Thanks to the V-Ray dirt texture, we can feel that objects in our scene are affected by time, making the image more realistic. And just like that, we were done with our production phase. All that was left from our workflow is the post-processing. During this project, we relied on the cloud collaboration for communication. There you can upload your rendered images directly to the cloud. All you need to do is click this arrow here and click on the Chaos Cloud Collaboration button. Before uploading the image, always make sure that you have loaded the correct image in the V-Ray frame buffer. If you haven't created a project like I have, you can create a new one from here. After that, you want to click the new upload and open the Chaos Cloud in your browser. There you will find the project we just created and the image from the VFB. If I go to another project I have set, you can see all the images I have uploaded that need to be reviewed by my colleagues. So let's say that someone would like to change the clouds in the shot. 
Once they have a link to your folder, they can open the project and leave comments for further corrections. After we added the finishing touches, we had to render all of our shots, a task that requires a lot of computational power. For us, it was important that we get a fast preview of our shots so we can tweak additional segments to perfection. That's why we use the Chaos Cloud. You can now export your scene to the cloud up to 10 times faster than previous versions of V-Ray. You can upload up to 100 frames that will render simultaneously. For more information about the cloud rendering service, you can visit our site. Within a reasonable amount of time, we can generate a preview of our animation and decide if we want further corrections. Now I would like to tell you a bit about the Finite Dome, a powerful new utility that allows you to properly project your HDRI. If you have received a project without any exterior and you're wondering what type of environment to put it in, you can use a dome light with an HDRI. This way you can easily add a 360 degree projection image of an exterior instead of manually creating one. Or you can capture your own 360 degree image of a real world plot and use it as an environment for your project. Let me demonstrate how it works. Just by adding a dome light with an HDRI to represent the environment of your project, you can already get a pretty good reference. But we can't truly immerse ourselves in the environment. That's because with just an HDRI, we don't get the proper depth perception. So let's change that by enabling the new finite dome option. The ground blend blends between the horizon line and our ground. By increasing the projection height, we can control the scale of the dome light. All these options should be adjusted based on your HDRI. And that was it, V-Ray 6 for SketchUp. It's an amazing update to the already existing toolset. With the Enscape collaboration, you can now open your real-time Enscape scenes directly in V-Ray to continue building on your work, taking it to the highest possible level of photorealism. Thanks to the cloud generator, we can now create the exact sky we want for our shot. Material creation and texturing are now more powerful than ever. You can now use the EndMesh to easily create tileable 3D patterns. Finally, you can use the Finite Dome to completely immerse yourself in the surrounding environment. All these factors gave us the ability to create this workflow of freedom and creativity without any limitations. I hope you enjoyed this webinar and you will try V-Ray 6 for SketchUp. Thank you for tuning in.